margin. You know, this point is called as the, what do you call it? Critical value. If your calculated value goes beyond it, you say a null hypothesis gets rejected. It goes below this. Look at the words I said. I said it goes beyond this. In negative side, I said it goes below this. You have your null hypothesis getting rejected. I said this is a two-tailed test, which is without direction. So in the null hypothesis, if you have an equal to symbol, and in the alternate hypothesis, you have a not equal to symbol, then it is a two-tailed test. But if you have a symbol, which is to do with greater than, or which is to do with a less than, then it is a one-tailed test. Next slide, Mark. Again, further. Yeah, did you get these values there? This is for a 5% two-tailed test. We have 1.96. Plus 1.96, minus 1.96. Check the normal table, you'll get it. And if it is to do with, uh, when this is manual, we'll be more into the p-value. If it is to do with 1%, it is plus 2.58 and minus 2.58. For 10%, we are looking at this there. I mean, we don't do much with the 10 and 25% there, right? Next slide. Uh, critical region and all I've said. Let's look at that p-value. I said, do you get that word reject on both sides? It goes below that or above this kind of a thing there. Next one. This scroll, ma. one or two slides. Uh, can you see this one-tailed test? And what is the symbol I said? No, left tail, left tail. Here you see null and equal to I said, but here I said, greater. It's actually less than kind of a symbol there. I find the rejection region here and I find both are rejection regions which are there on both the tails there. Let me go for another diagram. Can you see this? Right tail. What is the symbol? Greater than. I said positive connoting word. And when I get a left tail, can you see that left tail? I said it is to do with the choice of words that you use what you want to prove or disprove. Education brings down poverty. Brings down. Is it positive, negative, or neutral world? Negative connoting. Prosperity. Education brings prosperity. It's a positive connoting world. It's a choice of your word letters that determines what tail you take. Two tail, your rejection region is on both sides. Next slide, Mark. Ma, yeah. Next, next, further. And this is to do with the Z test and other things. Further. Again. Further, I don't want this either. Next. I mean, you could go through all those examples there. I don't want to spend time on that. Further, Ma. Okay. Just wait there. See, when it comes for tools of analysis, it's like uh, six blind men. This is an Indian fable from the Panchatantra, you say. They touch different parts of the elephant, and uh, what is in their axis, they say that is true. Someone touches the tail of an elephant, says it's like a rope. Someone touches the tusk and says sword. Someone touches the ears and said fan. Someone touches the body and said it is a wall. Do you get that? And someone touches the tusk and he says it's a snake. But the fact is that the same one elephant but six people are drawing six different interpretations, which is not the right thing to do. Same data given to everyone, you should get the same result. Right? Next one, Ma. Now, I'm slightly going from the earlier classification of tools. I've used these words yesterday too. Where I said the data is, I mean, your statistics is what? Descriptive and inferential. The descriptive doesn't talk about the why part. Inferential is more about hypothesis testing, probability, parametric, non-parametric. Descriptive again, is it univariate, bivariate, and multivariate? Univariate, is it talking about shape? If I plot, can I get uh, a shape which is of this kind? Can I get a shape of this kind? Or can I get a shape of this kind? Mesocortotic, platycortotic, leptocortotic. Am I talking about the central value 
which is mean, which again can be arithmetic mean, harmonic mean, and geometric mean. Is it something I'm talking about the spread of data? You have skewness, you have kurtosis, a lot of those things to study. And I'm talking about the relative position. Where do you stand? If I'm trying to look out for a percentile relative position. If I divide the entire result into 100 parts, where do you stand related to the 100 parts? Decide a quartile. Or it could be to do with bivariate. I mean, I'm trying to study two things together, bivariate frequency. It could be a correlation. It could be a regression. Chi-square comes under that. Then it could be multivariate. I told a lot of those tools yesterday. Conjoint analysis, discriminant analysis, factor analysis, multidimensional scaling. They are all descriptive. It doesn't establish cause and effect. But when you talk about cause and effect, it is to do with inferential. You talk about applied to means, if it is two group or one group, and any other setting. You're talking about Z-test, T-test, and all of this. This is another classification you have. Can I get to the slide, Ma? Next one. Now, yeah, go ahead. Keep clicking. I think this is something what I told in the beginning to you as well. It is from a population. I'm picking a sample. I'm trying to study details of the sample. And whatever things I am able to study the sample, I say it holds good for the population. Next one. Now, this is another very important way how you decide about your tools. Whether you are, I mean, there are different types of researchers. That research you do to shed light on the problem. Try to understand the problem. You're not finding solution. To know the problem, if you do research, you're calling it as exploratory. And if you're trying to establish relationship between variables, you call it explanatory. You want to find relationship, you call it correlational. You only want to talk about who, when, what, not the why part, you call it descriptive. This is one of the classifications of research you have. You could read further. Correlation attempts to discover and establish existence of relationship. And you talk about explanatory, you're talking about the why part, you know, why and how. Exploratory, it is you're trying to explore an area which is little known. And look at uh, the other things, you know, here, most often it could be different thing. You know, my title of my research is, it is an exploratory research. If somebody would check my thesis. I mean, I did it when customer relationship management was in the initial phase, CRM. My title, I have the word exploratory there. I was trying to figure out why. Then a lot of softwares and other things. Next one, Ma. No, I don't want, but one thing just to, one slide before, Ma. Just to tell everyone that you don't decide the tools after collecting the data. There's another bigger mistake which scholars do. They finish the data collection, they come and put me a puzzle. Sir, tell me what tools to be used. I said, you should have come to me before you decided your design. Now, why those two things are marked in bold facets here and the fonts are? When you're doing a research design itself, you decide on the tools, not after you collect the data. Are you getting it there? Next slide. You're collecting for the very first time. This is another blunder people make. Huh? I found one of the students saying that questionnaire is a secondary data. It's not secondary data. Another college I went, I found a bigger blunder. Collected by somebody else, they are fine-tuning it to their usage. They're calling it primary. Or somebody else's primary data is primary to them also. How can that be? Collected by somebody else. And if you're using it for your purpose, it is secondary. No, sir, they collected. Where is your questionnaire? No, there's no questionnaire. So how do you claim it to be primary? Do you get there? So collected by somebody to serve the purpose of your objective and your hypothesis is primary. Collected by somebody else, you are fine-tuning it to your requirement is secondary. Next one. And there are a lot of those tools that you have. I always tell that I've seen my skeleton in Bangkok because I was put in a gas chamber wherein they were trying to check whether I have some implants to blow the plane. And that was when I traveled in the year 2012 to Thailand. So that was 9-11 was still in mind. So people were checking. I think it's sooner or later you're going to get in our airport also. Today you get into malls what people are using. Metal detectors run all through you. 
you know when i'm trying to give my boarding pass and walk even my ring my key my belt buckle my footwear everything is to be removed to ensure there's no metal on me that is the level of safety you want to ensure so you ask a person are you carrying a weapon he will not tell you so you'll have to use a mechanical device to check it out so what is that tool that you're using quantitative numbers and qualitative maybe you get this more as theory it's more used in social sciences a case study method a focus group method individual depth interview method and all that stuff next one ma i think this is a slide which is very much i told in the beginning and i did it yesterday you remember this slide okay next one now i told the words discrete and uh, continuous yesterday i told attribute variable i told the primary scales which are nominal ordinal interval ratio next one i did these two slides so i won't repeat it now it was in two parts i discussed yesterday remember and again the classification of variables will it be quantitative qualitative next slide next one how do we analyze i mean i love to tell you some myths myth is this is knowing it people still continue oh my god people who know little about uh, e views they ramble a lot in the rooms where vivas are conducted gragnar they say that tool this tool once i asked a scholar when you can prove it with one tool why are you using 10 tools do you just because it is available you are trying to impress somebody and another thing when you can't clarify you confuse i understand what i'm saying so you think the person on the other side is ignorant so you use jargon and you try impressing that you know a lot about quantitative techniques and you confuse the person there you can't clarify and simple things i have seen wherein even if there is a test if the center for quantitatives is doing it you must know what is degrees of freedom you must know what is p value don't tell he did it and gave and this is what i present no it can't be that way all right so the thing is that's something wherein you use big words to impress people 